paradigm, which is like, you know, left rhetoric versus right rhetoric and, you know, to move the ball somewhere down the line. And I, I now reject that idea that that is not what's happening. It's basically a conversation between the uber left and the uber left. And that um, the uh, the Republicans that are part of the ruling class are basically the uber left. And they're in their stealth mode trying to take over the Republican Party by, you know, basically the Republicans meaning, you know, people that are more constitutionalist, conservative. I myself being libertarian am not for any war whatsoever. And I'm for total legalization of all drugs. And to get the uh, cartels out of the game of, 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 of criminal, um, you know, drug dealing. And we never will because, um, like I say, I've known through a couple of contacts high up in the uh, in the echelon. Um, I was told that I was completely accurate by a couple of people who heard me speak, and um, they said that you know the, the United States can never you know and the Pentagon can never give up the drug dealing, you know, and um, because you know it's, it's also being orchestrated by the NSA and the CIA, they can't give it up. Because it's trillions in revenue, you know, and um, for for all the things they want to do. And uh, so they, you know, basically uh, the war on drugs is really a war to get rid of any other people dealing drugs so that the United States would be the biggest drug dealer in the world and is. And uh, my further proof today is the poppy fields in Afghanistan. Don't forget this. Never before have they had such bumper crops as they do now, and most of that heroin comes right in the United States thanks to the U.S. military. So you see, I am, you know, uh, all about not worshiping the military like the sort of Sarah Palins of the world, and um, I'm against corruption. Now, I, I know that's a blind spot for her and other conservatives who are all about the troops and the military and Gary Sinise and all this stuff. And, you know, they're, sure, I understand that. But there's another point where I don't think that our soldiers should be involved in drug dealing and human trafficking, don't you? You know, at some point, and I also, you know, am, am, am whack in the conservative circles because I do believe that 9-11 was not only an insult, was a military uh, job, it was a planned PSYOP for years designed to enslave the American people, and it did. You know, and Bush was uh, knew all about it. And uh, those buildings were prof professionally demolished and thousands of people were involved in the operation. And yes, absolutely. And I also believe that it's, you know, this is like three quarters, but I, I know there was something wrong with the moon. And I know that Stanley Kubrick was involved in some kind of cover up regarding the moon. So, you know, that makes me right there a conspiracy theorist and whacked and they can't listen to me, even though I just said the truth. They can't see the truth because they can't wrap their minds around the fact that the world is as evil as what I just said. It's useless going through multiplying examples. I mean, if you want to do that, you can listen to Alex Jones. My point here is to prophesy about what is going on in this world and what is, you know, how we're going to cope with it. First of all, this abiding love of Christ, it's its just got to be in your uh, step that the Lord guides you. So therefore, don't worry. The Lord made you free and you'll be free indeed. Remember uh, John 8 yesterday, you know, the Lord made, made us free indeed. And now we must continue to prophesy in God's word. And um, what we say is this, I say the truth in Christ I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, uh, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who... Uh, is over all God bless uh, forever, Amen. Not of though, not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for uh, they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh; these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Um, you know, in other words, God has his people everywhere. It's not a genetic thing. It's not to negate that um, Abraham was chosen and he would be the father of a mighty nation. 
and that the Jews would rebel and that Christ would be crucified and that he would live and that eventually <clears throat> that blindness that came over the Jews as in Romans 11 would then be lifted and they would uh, embrace Messiah at long last seeing you know where they couldn't see before just like we do we see Christ and we're like why didn't I see that before because we were blind until the moment of a certain anointing and so um you know, we we have to understand neither, uh, you know, those who are um, Israelites that pertain to the adoption uh, and those who are Israelites, uh, this whole concept of Israel, okay, so this is what the Lord wants me to speak about. This whole concept of Israel is um, curious because Israel, this idea of Israel being those of Christ, that is true. This idea, now I'm not saying, well, it's, yeah, I know all the arguments. I'm not going to go there. This whole idea of a um, ultimately in time, the people, what it means is this. The people of God ultimately are his people Israel or his people. Uh, even you know, the whole term Israel becomes irrelevant in the end. It becomes totally irrelevant. It's not relevant. It's those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and those who aren't. Now, remember in John 8, Jesus attacked the Pharisees. He said, you say you're of Abraham and of God, but you are not because you don't love me. Okay? So now we're comparing Romans 9 here and John 8. And we see from this the picture that not everyone who says they're Jews are Jews. If you are, um, say you're a Jew, but you don't love God, then you're not really a Jew because a Jew, just by definition, is is a spiritual term. You know, it's it 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 almost you know, it's it's inferences of God. You know, Israel is of God. So you know, there are Jews who say they're Jews but are not, but the synagogue of Satan. And um, the Pharisees were the, obviously the synagogue of Satan because Jesus in John 8 said, you are of your father, the devil. So he just accused the entire religious establishment, just like me going up on the, against the churches. What I say to the churches is the exact same thing Jesus said to the church of his time. I don't say this church is 501c3, but the synagogue of Satan. In other words, I can say the same thing. The, the people that say they're Christians but are not, but are liars. They are of their father, the devil, because they live a lie. Because they, do, they are conformed to the world, which is impossible if you're in Christ, unless you're living a deception and are deceived. And is there any hope for these people? Genu generally not. And here's where I come in as, as prophesying. No, they're not. No, they are not going to be redeemed. I'm sorry. In, I mean, in general, there may be one or two here or there, you know, that are saved by fires. It says in the book of Jude, save some with fire, with fear, you know, pull them, pull, save, some, save some with fear, pulling them out of the fire, you know, and give all praise to the Lord. You know, obviously there are, you know, those, but in general, no, people make their decisions and that's it, you know. This idea of hoping for people to be saved and hoping that people will be redeemed is um, one just simply needs to jump to the prophecy. In other words, if the Lord gives you a word, says this one, no. It means that one, no. It means walk away. I don't care whether it's your son, your daughter, family, father, mother, whatever. If, they, if God says this one, no, then you move on. And, you know, realize that you are um, God's people. You know, if you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you are a lamb, you know, then you are God's people. You are you know, you are God's people and, and there is no race uh, 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 or Semitic race or anybody else above you. You are God's people and, um, and that's it. Yes, you could be said, see, here's the problem we run into. How many Jews were there in Israel at the time of the prophets? How many people, how many Jews were really of God? I contend that uh, at best you had a, a very, very small percentage who really were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because remember, Jesus Christ created the world from the beginning. He, he's eternal, and he's beyond the creator. He is the creator, ultimately. So how many Jews were there? How many people were really loyal to Jesus at the time of Moses, at the time of uh, Jesus, at the time of Abraham? A small percentage. 
And how many were kind of stragglers? Okay, and another, you know, more higher percentage. And then how many were just satanic who, who gave their hearts and lives to the devil? Over half, at least. Uh, you know, and when you finally got to it, you only had about 10% of the Jews who at any time were completely dedicated to the Lord, you know, who belonged to the Lord and not to the world. Then you had a great deal in the middle who sort of belonged to the world but didn't want to admit it, so they were living in denial, right? And even, you know, even in the time of John the Baptist, Zacharias had to put his son out in the wilderness to keep him from being conformed to the world. So he had to, like, hide him out in the woods because they would have come for him. How is that different from Sodom and Gomorrah? It's the same thing. See what I mean? How is Israel different from Sodom? It's the same thing. How is Israel different from the United States? No, they're what well, they're the same. Or Europe, they're the same. Or Africa, they're the same. It doesn't matter what continent, they're the same. There's a certain percentage of people that's written in the Lamb's Book of Life who are really the real Jews, if you will, or the real people of God, or the real Israelites. And the rest just are posers. And on that, I think my my spiritual Israel people and me, and I think on that we all can, at least on that we can agree. You know, they want to get all caught up in the whole politics of it. And, you know, we're the Jews and, you know, Israel is false. And But I remind you that there are uh, Jews in Israel who are not false. I mean, I, I'm just going with what the Bible says. And that is that these people are going to be awakened at a certain time. To their Messiah. And ultimately, I agree with you. If they reject Messiah, then that's it. Then, you know, that's it. But is, 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 the, is the New Jerusalem um, really a physical place? Indeed, it's, it's not. It's a multidimensional place. It's not exactly what you're, 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 you're getting. You know, you're not seeing it because it's what's described in the book of Revelation is multidimensional. Light comes from within us. And, and from within objects, okay, that's not, you know, you're not dealing with a normal place that you go. I need to address the issue of hierarchy. There is no hierarchy with God. You're of God or not, you're made to do what you do, and there is no hierarchy. There's, God is not a merit, meritorious system. There are some people that want to argue about, you know, wearing, you know, looking like Jews is what God wants and all that. And I have to tell you something. Um... And they feel like they're going to have a great place in heaven while other people are going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, toilet attendants or whatever, which would be the job I would volunteer for, by the way. Um, no, there is no higher. I can just tell you, I, I've seen it. There is no hierarchy there like that. There is nothing there like that. You're either of God or not. And, the, you know, the thief on the cross, the guy who wants to look like the uber Jew, the guy that, uh, you know, has his head shaved, the guy that does this or that, the guy that's the you know, um, works and, you know, most people would say, oh, that's a very unspiritual guy. If he belongs to God, he belongs to God. It doesn't matter. There is no meriting um, position in um, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, there is not like the anointed people in charge. And, you know, that's here on earth. With God, everything functions without reflection in the kingdom. There is no reflection. There is no hierarchy. There is no meriting um, by being good here. You get especially good treats there. That's not the way it works. You're either of God or not. You either overcome or not. It's either A or F. <clears throat> and anyone who passes is equal to everyone else who passes. And there is no exception to that. And that will never change. And those of you who believe there is some sort of hierarchy or some merit, meritorious, uh, a meritocracy system, you are absolutely mistaken. But... You know, it's okay. The Lord will show you in the end how foolish you are to think that. I mean, that's that's a childlike thing to think. That That's, that's you know, believing that God's in a box here and he's your God in your box and you're going to tell God what he's all about. It's just not true. You're either of God or not. And if you're of God, then um, you have the same privilege uh, as everyone else, whether you're of God for five minutes and in your conscious mind of understanding, of God for 30 years, of God holier than holy, who never, uh, you know, who never gets drunk, never masturbates, never, never, um, whatever, you know, you can be just perfect like that. And another guy could be kind of all over the map having troubles, but you both are equal in God. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Does that bother you? 
um, it really doesn't matter. Some people are made stronger and can resist the the things. Well, eventually.